and welcome back to the Commissioner's Report. Joining me now is Commissioner Melanie Bell. Commissioner, it's great to have you back on the program. Excited to be here today. And we're going to be talking about Fort Meade, so appropriately we bought brought Bob Elliott on the show. He's one of the city commissioners from Fort Meade. It's great to have you here as well, Bob. Thank you, Mike. Happy to be here. It is a Fort Meade focus today, Commissioner, and uh, we were talking about the last time you were here in January, we were looking at Frostproof, the, the cities within your district, District Number 2. But Fort Meade is certainly special because this is your home. Absolutely. It's where my roots are, and uh, I was excited to be able to do Fort Meade here. You know, as you know, I've served on the uh, City Commission for 14 years and as Mayor's son before I moved on to County Commission. and. Uh, Fort Meade is just a, a town where we, you know, we talked about it earlier that everybody knows each other and everybody cares. And of course, you're on the city commission currently. You've been there Correct. 14 been years, something? Approximately 14 years. <laughs> and I have served as mayor three times, for three terms. And you two did serve <clears throat> together for at least a brief period, is that what I understand? Yeah, and actually yeah. sat next to each other, so this is kind of like deja vu here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so just so people know, the, with the city, the way it works, that you don't elect a mayor, you elect five commissioners and you rotate the right. mayor, kind of like the chairman of the city manager county. type yeah. of government. Right. So at that point, mm -hmm. the mayor okay. is strictly a pointed uh, off the floor yeah. of the commission. Yeah. I should also point out that you're also a business owner there uh, in uh, Fort Meade, Greenwood Chevrolet. Chevrolet. <coughs> you can't miss it when you're coming right into on <laughs> Oh, uh, good. Perfect. Thank you. On 98. <laughs> and uh, so strong ties and roots to, the, to that area. L let me just ask you real quickly about Fort Meade now, because I want to show them a piece where I got a chance to go down and visit the city. There's something unique about all, all the cities in Polk County, but uh, Fort Meade is, is, is certainly different and it has a long history. What is it about Fort Meade that that you like so much, Commissioner? Well, I think our claim to fame is the oldest city in the county. Uh, you know, it was began as a phosphate mining town and then turned into citrus as the years went through. So we have a lot of agricultural uh, in Fort Meade. A lot of businesses depend on agriculture actually in Fort Meade. But uh, I like, like I said earlier, the warmth of the town. Uh, it's small enough that we know each other, but yet it's large enough that uh, you know, we're not in each other's business either. And Commissioner Elliott, I know you're not <coughs> born and raised in Fort Meade, but you've been there for Correct. a number of years. I've been there approximately 40 years. Wow. Well, no, what and is it about Fort Meade that's, that's kept you there? We raised our family there, we have four children, and I kind of echo what Melanie said there. The neat thing about Fort Meade is that we're far enough away from things, but we're close enough. And years ago, there was a study done, and John Clyde with PICO was involved with that. Yes. If you take the population of the state of Florida, the pivot point, is Fort Meade, and they actually erected a monument there, so we're kind of the center of it all. Well, this is a perfect time to introduce you to Fort Meade if you're not that familiar with it. I recently had a chance to visit this historic city. It's historic because it's the oldest city in Polk County. I wanted to learn more about their history, which goes way back before it actually became a city, as well as some of the residents today. It's historic Fort Meade, where the past and the present is working together to form a future. Fort Meade is located near the Peace River in the southwest corner of Polk County. It's a quiet town with nearly 6,000 residents. Lita Wright has lived in Fort Meade all her life. She raised her family here. Now she's raising awareness of her city's past. And the Talakashapu Indians uh, were here and they lived in their village on the banks of Peace River and that's where Chief Oliseola was. And Bowlegs Creek, a little south of the city, is named for Chief Billy Bowlegs. So we had two Indian chiefs right here way before Fort Meade ever got started. The city was settled in 1849 near the banks of the Peace River and named after Lieutenant George Meade, who crossed the river at nearly the same location where the bridge on US 98 is located today. But things changed in the 1880s when the railroad came to Fort Meade. So they built the depot there for people to uh, travel on the train. People used uh, a trolley car from Old Town down at the river to get to the train up here in Newtown. Then Fort Meade downtown moved from the river about one mile west. Many of the original buildings built in the business district are still in use today. 
and Fort Meade has more than 300 homes listed on the National Register of Historic Places. But it was a discovery in the late 1800s that put Fort Meade on the map, phosphate. Now today we have very few of the companies left and one of the main companies today is Mosaic. Today, students at the high school are still known as the Miners. I graduated from Fort Meade High School and um, we had uh, a good football team back then. Sports have always been important in this area and now native son Andrew McCutcheon is expanding Fort Meade Spotlight. How they look upon Andrew, uh, they look upon him as a hometown hero, someone that helped put Fort Meade on a national map. While Andrew has moved on to the major leagues with the Pittsburgh Pirates, his parents have remained in Fort Meade. So I saw really no need to leave. I, I like uh, the feeling of home, uh, community support. Uh, we have a lot of great businesses and a lot of good ministries here in our city where we all work together. Petrina has a lot of memories watching her son on this field, including a time when the eyes of baseball were on Fort Meade. There were about 28 scouts from, you know, the major league here to see Andrew McCutcheon. In fact, we thought that there were more scouts here than there were fans. <laughs> it never gets old uh, because it just is a reminder of how blessed we are. In Fort Meade, it's a feeling of community where everyone is family. And as you can see, Fort Meade, one of the things I noticed about Fort Meade, it was quiet. I like that. It was not a lot of noise and hustle and bustle. All right, let's change gears here a little bit. There's a lot we want to talk about in our, in our time here. And Commissioner, we were talking about there's a lot going on with the kids in the high school, and the academies, also training up leaders and certainly with the chamber uh, leadership Fort Meade. That's a big part of uh, preparing people for the future, isn't it? Absolutely, Mike. We have a strong chamber in Fort Meade. The businesses get behind the chamber and get behind young leaders and they created a program three years ago, Leadership Fort Me, that took adults through the program then decided to take the youth and chose the youth from the high school. And so they intermingled the program and it has uh, gone on for three years now. And it's been able to take these youth along with adults and network them throughout the county and also the state of Florida. They've taken them to Tallahassee, uh, through the Capitol to meet, you know, our delegation. So, you know, we're, we're trying to identify young leaders from the beginning and uh, so they get the right track in, you know, in Fort Meade that they'll be able to, hopefully, you know, if they leave, they'll come back, you know, want to, you know, because their roots are there and, and want to make, maybe, you know, build a home or, you know, raise a family like we did. Yeah, if you don't prepare your, your kids for adulthood in the future, you're not really helping them at all, mm -hmm. imagine. And you were also talking about their, the, the, at the high school for the uh, fighting minors, I think I've got yes. that right. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the academy there that's also training them in a way as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you said fighting minors, and uh, actually we have Friday Night Lights in Fort Meade. Uh, <laughs> if you've just liked the show, it's uh, very oriented around sports but also academics and so they've created the high school along with the school board has created some academies and they have partnered with Welldyne for a pharmaceutical academy. These kids can start in eighth grade and students can go through senior and graduate with a degree in pharmaceutical accredited de degree and start out working for pharmacists and Welldyne has also said you know they would hire these kids and actually they have already They've hired them you know, for spring break, in the summer, and then when they're graduating. And then we also have CSX as partner with the school for their logistics. And they've been out to, uh, out here, uh, actually the new CSX, mm -hmm. uh, interlocal, or the intermodal, I'm sorry. And then they've also been to Jacksonville. And so they've taken a couple of field trips there. That's really interesting how it's preparing uh, for, the, for the future. Let me, also, let me talk about some of the present, which also is going to lead us into the future. There's a big project that is not under construction, but it's getting ready to get underway. But I want to talk about a couple of things that are already here. Streamsong and Bone Valley, two totally different projects, not actually inside the city of Fort Meade, but uh, Commissioner Elliott, you know, these are bringing people through your community, like Bone Valley, you know, well, they, they like are. to go out there and, and be in the wilderness. we talked ahead of time, we're staking claim to both of those projects. <laughs> <laughs> and, there's also a couple other business entities that have moved to the area. And if you put the head count all together for employment, which is kind of the foundation for everything, there's both part-time part and full-time approximately 500 jobs that have come to our area. 
And <coughs> you consider, huge. yeah, in South Polk County, when you have a community of six thousand people. Yeah, percentage-wise, that's a that's a big percentage, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that, that's big. So you said six thousand people, right? So approximately six thousand. Yeah, Five hundred jobs. That's 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 a lot. Now, Bone Valley, that's continuing to do very well. Stream Song, which has been there for about a year, has continued to uh, you know to do well, drawing people in. But you have something else that's coming around. I know you're very excited about. Well, <clears throat> we had a vision and kind of just a thought about five years ago to do something with our recreational park that is currently there and expand it. And it's called the Fort Meade Outpost Camp mm -hmm. <clears throat> or Park and it's an equestrian center also which is kind of the tie. And I know you photographed the park down there so you've, you've kind of seen it in its present stage which is very remote and it's absolutely some of the prettiest land in Polk, or in Polk County in Central Florida. And I imagine as I was, I was looking at some of the, the site plans, I mean, this is a, a very big, uh, ambitious project with equestrian is a big part of this. And equestrian activities are huge all over the, the state of Florida and central part of the state of the Florida. And, and to have an equestrian center, and, and I guess eventually at some point, uh, there's going to be resorts, a hotel there, and an RV facility. So you're really looking at not just drawing people here, but once you've got them here, you can, they can <coughs> kind of stay in Fort Meade and kind of enjoy this, uh, this community. And Mike, when we started this project, it started out small and it kind of gained its own momentum. And we had a, a grant from the USDA to do a feasibility study. <clears throat> and we started doing that. We just brainstormed all these other ideas to tie in. Commission and would since it's located on the Peace River, it's a natural tie-in for the uh, canoes, kayaks. You know, I, I was going to say, Commissioner, that's a, you know, the Peace River is a big part of this, too. You've got the river. People love water. And that's a great, you're building right there mm -hmm. on it. So that's, that's a huge uh, plus as well. And Commissioner Bell, let me, I'm calling you up. They're both commissioners here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you think about a project like this, and we're, and we're quickly running out of time, but uh, there's going to be a number of ways this is going to be paid for. And that's a oh. big part of how this, how this is all going to come together. Well, as you know, commissioners, we're always looking at how can we improve our economics. And this is going to be an improvement for not just Fort Meade, but uh, regional. If you think about Polk County all the way down to Hardy, Highlands, uh, DeSoto County in that area. So we're going to bring tourism in, and the uh, Tourist Development Council is always looking for projects throughout the county. How can we spend the heads and beds tax to get a return on our investment? And this is one of the projects of the four that we're looking at to fund. And it's already uh, been approved by the Tourist Development Council. Now we're going to be having a joint workshop with the commissioners in so that we can come to a plan for all four projects. Well, it'll be exciting to kind of chart the progress and, and let people know how things are going. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we close the show, we're quickly out of time. But I do want to mention something that's coming out this month on the 17th. That's a Friday. Moonlight and Music. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Tell, tell me about that. This is going to be exciting for Fort Meade. It's April 17th. It's going to be at our Patterson Park as you're going into Fort Meade on 17, as you're heading south. It'll be on your right. It's a beautiful park there. And we are having actually four music groups come in. We've uh, partnered with Polk State College with their um, arts department. And uh, actually we have a group coming in from uh, Chicago, the Voices of the People. So it's gonna be a diverse set of music for the whole community. So we're hoping, you know, not only just to have Fort Meade residents there, but to bring in county and regional uh, people in, in Central Florida. And perhaps the best part is mm -hmm. it's Free. It's free, yes. Yeah. People love yeah. free, and, don't they? And this is our inaugural shot at it, and we hope it becomes an annual or a quarterly event. Mm -hmm. And the, any proceeds left over are going to the Women's Club in Fort Meade. Very good. Very good. We'll have to have good you come cost. back and give us an update and talk about the second annual uh, Moonlight and there Music. We well, Commissioners, Commissioner Bob Elliott, thank you so much for being here. Mike, thank you. And of course, Commissioner Bella, as always, I appreciate you being on the Commissioner's Report. And I appreciate you spotlighting Fort Meade, my hometown. There you go. Fort Meade on the map for sure. Thank you so much for joining us on this April edition of the Commissioner's Report, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.